Right, there's Bicknola Post. I've just come along Lady's Edge. I think there's some sort of hunt going on today. If I saw it, something's happening. Anyway, I came all across from there last week when I'd been on a big circular that way. Today I'm going down this valley. This valley is called Wee Valley. I don't know anything about it, but it, it is all recorded. Then I'll be coming back up. There's a plantation there, a group of trees right in the distance there, right? I'll be down there, which I've been on. I've been on the track right down the bottom before when I skirted around from West Quantock Head in the past. So I will be familiar, but I, I, and I've been over that way and I've been along, I've done that Beacon Hill it's called. I've done that in the past. Look at these lovely old gnarled trees, look. Cause this is like a carpet, you know, this grass. It's lovely walking down here. It probably wouldn't be too bad walking up it. So the plan today was to make my way here. Um, I can see two people who are up on the... Uh, the beacon going to be up there. The trig point is somewhere up there, which I've done before. People pointing everything out. And this... I think this is called Wee Valley. Um, I've got a little booklet at home and there's something written about it on a plaque. I don't know if I'll get near that plaque again. But I've walked all the way around that Beacon's Edge as well. They've all got names. Um, I think that I might even have the map inside my bag, but I can't... I'm not going to get it out yet. All I know, this was uh, part of my mission and to actually go down and come back up the other side of that beacon and then go down Smith's Coombe. Um, in the heat of the summer, I walked up Smith's Coombe for the first time ever and, um, and now I want to go down it. I want to go down it before the real winter comes just in case it's a raging torrent of water. I've got no idea it might be, see? It might, it might be like that. Anyway, if you look around, there's no white dots, there's no sheep. The sheep were rounded up last week. I, whether they take them in for a while and check them over, who knows, slaughter them, I've got no idea. It has put me off eating lamb, to be honest, to what I've seen. Um, well, the, the, the thing is, quad bikes are noisy. But the thing is, it's how, it's the manner in which they're driven, I always say. But um, there's no sheep. There's no sheep. There's no cows. And the deer are scared to death. Now, I spoke to an old farmer earlier. He assured me that the noise I heard earlier, which was from a stag, was rutting. I reckon it wasn't rutting because I could hear dogs. I think it was being attacked. It's just, it, it, this is what happens though. Apparently it's nothing unusual about it. I've been told. This is, this is a countryside. And they have to, and they do care about the stags. But I told them about, I, all I said to him, I stress about trophy hunters. And poachers from coming from other places. <sighs> So why is it they've suddenly decided in the 21st century that about 200 stags is, um, and deer is all right? Well, I said, when I reminded this of a farmer, I said, but there used to be three, two to 3,000. So why, have, why suddenly have we, have we have to have just small numbers? Even the cows have disappeared. It's a bit early to take them in, isn't it? God, look at that valley, folks. Ah, oh, maybe over this side. It's a different farmer and the sheep are out. I love sheep. I talk to sheep all the time. Yes, look. My white dotted friends are there. 
to greet me when I go along now. What an amazing view this is. Wee Valley, this is called. I've never been down or up it in my life, by the way. Never been down or up it. I'm just going to turn off a minute while I take a photo. Right, I'm going down Wee Valley. W-E-A. Or Coombe. It might be a Coombe. Right, whatever. Now, I talk about sheep a lot. I've got sheep on the mendips I talk to all the time. Now, I grew to love sheep when I was a young person. I got invited as part of a gap year I was doing to go and work on a friend's sheep farm in Cumbria when I was 18 before I went and started college and everything. I spent several months on the Cumbrian Fells up near Penrith in a small village called Melmaby and I worked in the winter there and winters in Cumbria are quite quite severe believe me and we really had to dress up but I had a fantastic time on the farm I learned a lot about horses cows sheep people I used to go out socially with them all but my friend's family had worked on the sheep farm for years and years they were tenant farmers and up there they still had the lord of the manor so it was very very traditional but one thing impressed on me is my friend's old dad a real real farmer i could hardly understand him when he talked he was so broad with a cumbrian accent and um it's the kindness that they showed to their animals. He knew every single sheep as if they were an individual person. He even had names to them, like Tommy Cooper. Um, I learned an awful lot about sheep. They didn't have quad bikes then. I know they've got them now. I have been up there since. And there are a few quad bikes that they go out on now. And they still have the collies. When we used to round the sheep up in the winter, when we used to go and feed them, we used to have to really dress up big time. And we used to take the dogs and walk out on the fells in the winter. None of this quad bike stuff. And it was mainly done on foot, not really on a horse. Sometimes we'd use a tractor when we were taking out bells of hay for cows and horses. Um, that was when we'd have a trader on the back, or we sometimes went out in the Land Rover. So what I'm saying is I'm not when people recently thought I was just a townie, <coughs> accusing me of knowing nothing about the countryside. I think, hang on a minute, you know, I've had a lot to do with the countryside in my life, one way or another. And um, I, what I remember from that experience was their kindness to their animals you know even when they had to castrate the pigs which seemed absolutely horrible I remember they showed me everything when I was there taking out flukes that made the sheep like zombies take, taking them out the back of their neck the fluke um, sack they showed me a lot, but it was how they handled the animals when they were doing these procedures. They were not rough. They didn't have to tie them up. Um, they had skills, animal skills. And, um, you know, I've seen, um, I've seen, I've been out there helping when calves are being born. When, and setting up little nurseries in the barns for the sheep when they have their babies, their little lambs. Having to skin dead lambs and put the, the skin on a lamb whose mum had rejected it or had died. I learned a lot about farming life. 
I grew up in a rural community anyway, and um, which was changing rapidly. But the, this place, the Quantox, running my veins since I was a, chi a baby. As soon as I could walk, I was up here. So I just want to point out, you know, that some of us townies have got country skills as well, you know, and love of the countryside. Maybe some of the real country bumpkins, I'm not saying this is true, because I haven't seen it um, properly, because it, I never witnessed it in Cumbria. And I didn't always witness it in Somerset either, or Devon, or Cornwall. But um, maybe some people lose their sensitivity. Maybe something gets lost with the passage of time as, we, as the, the, the country people become more... They've evolved differently. Maybe they're losing skills. Um, they all go to college, some of them, or the, they're, they're thugs, some of them, aren't they? And they must be to do some of this stuff to animals. Anyway, you might not all want to hear all about that. You can turn the uh, volume down. But basically, I'm reflecting as I'm going along. This is a beautiful valley, by the way, isn't it? Imagine it in the summer when it's pitch green. I mean, I was up on a track up the top there, looking down here, thinking, yeah, I want to come here. I want to do this valley. I didn't realise how extensive it was. You see all these little hidden pockets on the Quantox, full of beauty. I mean, look at that holly tree, for example. Isn't that fantastic? And I can hear the babbling brook. And there's no doubt Wordsworth and Coleridge would have come down here as well. Right, over note for a minute.